In this video, you'll discover the best anti-inflammatory foods that will drastically improve your health. The reason I really love this topic is simply because everybody can benefit from anti-inflammatory foods. When you look at the chronic inflammatory problem that leads to heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and all these major diseases people are suffering from, these anti-inflammatory foods can be a huge answer from a day-to-day -day basis on how you can actually squash inflammation in your body, but a lot of people aren't familiar with them. So that's why in this video, we're gonna talk about the best anti-inflammatory foods that you can eat in order to drastically improve your health. So stick around to the end of this video. Before we get started, I'm Dr. Zarrao and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification, join our notification community, and I'm gonna help you excel your health and your life. Let's go ahead and talk about one of the first great anti-inflammatory foods, and that's gonna be berries. Now, when we think of berries, a lot of people are trying to avoid fruit altogether in today's you know modern dietary society. I mean, a lot of people are following ketogenic diets and they're trying to follow diets that have absolutely no sugar in them at all. Now, there's a time and a place for everything, of course. However, berries have a lot of benefits to offer. And so it's always good to make sure that we are looking to utilize berries to get the benefits, the anti-inflammatory, the anti-cancer benefits, because berries have a lot of good fiber in them, a lot of good minerals, a lot of good vitamins. Now they also have a lot of good antioxidants, specifically an antioxidant called anthocyanin. Now this anthocyanin <clears throat> has shown to have anti-cancer benefits and really help shut down inflammation in the body. So adding in berries and getting the benefit that they have to offer is great. Now, one of the things that's also great about them is they boost immunity and they're low glycemic, okay? So even if you're following the ketogenic diet, I see a lot of people think that they can't have any fruit at all if they're on the ketogenic diet. You don't wanna have the big fruits. You don't wanna have like a mango and banana, that kind of stuff, but you can still add in the berries. The berries are completely fine as long as you're not overdoing it, of course. They're low glycemic. That means they have low sugar content in them. Some of my favorite berries are gonna be strawberries, blueberries, Berries, raspberries, blackberries. And you know what? A lot of people who are following really bad diets, really low quality diets, they can go and take out the dessert, the junk dessert that they're eating, all the sugar and all that, and add in something like some really good berry desserts, whether it's a fruit uh, or a berry sorbet, whether it's some other type of berry dessert, there's a lot of options out there. And so add these in. I also like to add them in in a green smoothie. It's a great way to naturally sweeten a green smoothie and get a lot of the benefits they have to offer, get those antioxidants. It's a great way to kick your day off. Now let's go ahead and talk about the next food. And that's gonna be fatty fish. Fatty fish is excellent for so many reasons. I try to get fatty fish in a couple times a week. You know, if you could get it in daily, even better. But if you can't, a couple times a week is still amazing. Now, fatty fish is going to have omega-3 fatty acids in it, EPA, DHA. Now, studies show that these lower the CRP levels. That stands for C-reactive protein. So one of the things I do in my precision nutrition program where I do one-on-one -on -one health consulting with people like you is I like to go and do good quality testing. One of the tests that we run is one that will have a CRP marker in it. And when we get these tests back from people, it's so often that their C-reactive protein levels are very high. Combine that high C-reactive protein with cholesterol imbalances and you know high A1Cs and all these different problems going on, then you have a really good recipe for disaster on your hands. And so it's really awesome that you can utilize these omega-3s, bring down that C-reactive protein level, and then from there improve your health, decrease inflammation, now, the fatty fish and the omega-3s are gonna be really good for brain health too. Now, when we look at your brain, it just needs these. It's an absolutely crucial nutrient in order to have your brain thrive. A lot of people aren't getting enough of this stuff. So we wanna make sure we add that in. When we think of fatty fish, we wanna think of fish that are like salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. These are some of the great ones. Just think of the acronym SMASH fish, and that will always lead you back to this. A lot of people will go, oh, Dr. Zorowski, I don't remember what you said when I went to the store. Think of smash fish, that's the acronym for this, and you'll always remember when you're shopping, always get good quality fish. Don't get that farm-raised stuff. You wanna get good quality wild-caught fish. It's the best stuff. Now, grapes is another great food. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit high in sugar. If you're on a particular diet, you gotta be careful of this, but grapes are great because they have lots of antioxidants in it, specifically the anthocyanin, like we talked about with the berries. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I love about grapes is it has resveratrol in it. Now, resveratrol, is really powerful and it's correlated with shutting down that nuclear factor Kappa B 
in your body. Now, this nuclear factor kappa B is basically this inflammatory cycle. And when people have these autoimmune crises, when they have all these different anti-inflammatory crises, this thing is just running full bore in your body. And as a result of it, it really destroys your health. So resveratrol is one of those amazing nutrients that can help shut that down. Now, when we look at getting res resveratrol, if you're someone who's suffering from a condition, like I work with a lot of people that are suffering from conditions. So, you know, if I'm having them come in and they're working with me in the clinic, I'm not going to say, go home and eat yourself a bunch of grapes. I'm going to tell them, look, you're going to have to supplement with it. Because when we look at nutrition in general and in working with health problems, they always extract these different things like resveratrol from it. And then you get, you know, capsules of it or bottles of it. And that's how you would work with somebody who has a more serious condition that they're trying to overcome. But just in general, for the general public, you're going to get this resveratrol from grapes and it's going to be really great for you. So make sure that you look at the importance that resveratrol resveratrol can have on your body for shutting down this inflammatory cycle, which can be devastating when it goes under control, uncontrolled. Let's go ahead and talk about avocados. Now, avocados are a healthy source of minerals, a great source of potassium. I mean, a lot of people, when they're looking to get potassium, they go to bananas, forget the bananas, go to avocados, so much better. And you're also going to get lots of good magnesium from them. So, you know, avocados are great for those purposes, also loaded with monounsaturated fats. Those people who are following the ketogenic diet, good high fat, low carb diets, they are eating a lot of avocados. I mean, I like to try to get an avocado in th multiple times throughout the week. If I could get it in every day, that would be perfect. And one of the quick and easy ways that I like to add in an avocado is to just simply cut it in half, put some sea salt on it, and eat it that way. It's super simple. You don't have to have a bunch of uh, prep work with it, and it's easy to take in your lunch. And now, when we look at the avocados, lots of carotenoids, tocopherols in it, and it also is shown to reduce the nuclear factor kappa B markers. I can't tell you how important that is. Like one of the things we always look to when we work with people who have really bad inflammatory problems is shutting that cycle down in the body. It's the most important thing that can be done. So we look to things like resveratrol, like we just mentioned. And then we also look to things like, you know, ginger. Now ginger is also going to be really, really important when it comes to decreasing inflammation. Clinically, most of the different nutritional products that we use are going to have ginger in them when it comes to reducing inflammation because it works really well. Now, it's going to help reduce pain. It also has lots of different nutrients in it that are going to help decrease that inflammation. I mean, well-researched, very well-researched. It also has anti-cancer uh, properties. It also is antioxidative, helping you reduce that oxidative stress on the body that leads to disease, which leads to aging far beyond the uh, time frame that you want it to happen. So we want to have that anti-aging benefit. We want to use this. And now, how to use it? There's a couple ways you can use it. Obviously, Obviously, as I mentioned, you can use supplementation, but if you're cooking Asian dishes, that's a great time to get lots of ginger in. Um, going in and having like a ginger tea is excellent or even putting ginger in your smoothie. However, I will warn you because I have, um, I've actually had done this a couple times is put too much ginger in your smoothie. It's a great way to ruin it. I really like the flavor of ginger in different drinks. However, you can't overdo it. So it's a great thing to throw in your smoothie. Just be really light with it. Uh, next on our list is going to be turmeric. Now, turmeric is kind of one of the all-time favorites of anybody who's looking to reduce inflammation. Now, turmeric is so popular, so well-researched, and it has this uh, curcumin in it. Now, this curcumin is shown to be a super, super powerful anti-inflammatory. I can't stress enough how important that is. It has antifungal benefits, anti-inflammatory benefits, antibacterial benefits. Pretty much anybody in natural medicine is using something like turmeric in order to shut down that inflammatory process. Now, there's a major downfall when it comes to turmeric, and here's what it is. This turmeric is not very bioactive. It's not very bioavailable. And so when we eat it, we can't absorb it very well. So if you're just trying to get turmeric only by sprinkling it on your food, it can be a little bit tricky. But here's a little trick that you can utilize when cooking in order to get more out of it. Always make sure that you're using the turmeric and use black pepper together, okay? Because what happens is that that black pepper is going to help you help make that turmeric more bioavailable, help you absorb it, and then get some better benefits from it. 
Now, when we look at it from a nutritional perspective, almost any supplementation that we use that is using high dose curcumin in order to help somebody with an inflammatory problem has something called piperine in it. This is a black pepper extract that helps make the turmeric more bioavailable. Studies show that it actually makes it 2000% more bioavailable. So if you're just using it right in your home, you can utilize the turmeric spice with black pepper. It's gonna help make it a little bit more bioavailable. And then of course, if you're supplementing with it, you know, hopefully you're getting some good quality stuff and that's already taken care of so you don't have to worry about that. And what I'll do too is just because we are correlating foods and nutritional uh, uh, formulas in order to help you with your different uh, conditions you may be facing, what I'll do is I'll put links in the description below to some of these different things I'm mentioning here, some of these different formulas. Olive oil is great too. Now, olive oil contains oleocanthal. Now, this is shown to be really, really powerful when it comes to lowering inflammation in the body. Compared to ibuprofen, it actually they actually found that it worked just about the same, okay? So when you take, take this, uh, this active ingredient in olive oil and compare it to this, not only did it help reduce pain, but it also worked almost the same in reducing inflammation. So olive oil is awesome. I mean, the olive oil, olive leaf extract, all of that is excellent when it comes to your overall health. There's so many clinical applications to that. Uh, now, consumption of this is associated with a lower risk of disease, whether it's heart disease, whether it's uh, cancer, whether it's diabetes, all these different diseases because it has these good fats in it. It also has these properties that's gonna help decrease inflammation. Extra virgin olive oil is the way to go. The other thing you gotta watch out for is that you don't wanna heat this. You wanna use that olive oil as like a finishing sauce. You wanna use it as a uh, or I should say finishing oil, you wanna use it as a salad dressing, but you don't wanna be putting it in a pan, turning that heat on high and then frying with it or something like that because what happens is you denature this fat and it turns from a good fat to a bad fat. So never heat your olive oil if you wanna get the best results from it. Now, next on our list is gonna be cruciferous vegetables. These are always, always excellent. They have so many benefits to your liver, to your organ health. They're loaded with different nutrients. I mean, these are superfoods right here. So we wanna make sure that we're adding in these cruciferous vegetables whenever possible. Now, some of them are like broccoli, which is incredibly nutrient dense, bok choy, arugula, all the way down the turnips here. If you're not getting enough in your daily routine, put some berries into a smoothie with a lot of these different cruciferous vegetables in there you will find an incredible nutritional powerhouse. Give this video a thumbs up, put in the comment section some of your favorite foods I mentioned here, and also share it with your friends. And lastly, check out this video over here. That's gonna be a simple inflammation test that you can do in the comfort of your home. That's pretty cool. It's an easy to use test in the comfort of your home and it's inexpensive and it gives you a good indication as to what your current state of health is. And it also lets you know if it's making a change in this way and reducing that oxidative stress 